we can use the periodic properties of the trig functions to figure out what these problems are. And specifically, we're looking at problems when it's over 2. So both of these are going to be over 2. So if we know about our cosine function, we know that it starts up here at 1, and then it, it passes through at pi half, which is here, and again here, 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 and all of, oops, all of these intermediate spots. So let me graph what this is going to look like. So we have a function that goes like this, something like that, better drawn maybe. Okay, and so every time it passes through a pi half, we know that that's going to be at zero. So that's pi half. This dot right here is three pi half. Here we have five pi half. If we go backwards, we have negative pi half, negative three pi halves, and so on. You notice that all of these points that we're talking about are odd numbers. So if we look here at this problem, that 55 is an odd number, and so that means that this is going to be 0, and that would be our answer. Okay, so now if we look at that sine function, we know that sine is going to look like this. We have it going through 0 right here at the origin, again over here at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. So if we draw that out, we have this, and so on. So we know that every time we have a whole number pi, we're passing through 0. So if we look at this problem up here, this is not a whole number pi, it's still a pi half. But 416 divided by 2, since 416 is even, we can obviously divide that. So we actually have 208 pi, which means that's a whole number pi. And so just like the last problem, this one also equals 0. So your rule of thumb is that <clears throat> the if it's an odd number, like this one, then it's gonna, the cosine will be 0, and if it's an even number, then the sine will be 0.